This video is sponsored by Bouge RV. I love solar. In fact, my first breakout video on this channel was in 2017 on my system five years later. The only video that has more views was a video on my same solar system 10 years later. I've covered all the savings, data on production, and my experience to help you guys understand what to expect. But now I've moved and it's time to start all over again. So with all the things I've learned over the years, I'm taking it all to build a definitive solar buyer's guide with everything you need to know and you're probably wondering about going solar. This is episode one and we'll cover planning and solar panels. I'm Ricky, and this is Tube Da Vinci. Let's start with planning your system and what you can expect in terms of cost. The first step is to understand what your goal is by going solar. For example, for some it'll be saving money on their electric bills, or use more energy like running the AC more often without fears of crazy high cost. For others it'll be the environment, and finally for some it'll be about self-reliance and emergency preparedness, or some combination of all three. For me, it's all three. Coupled with the why is the how. If you're planning a solar system for your home, you'll need to decide if you're going to be going on grid or off grid. Most people will go on grid, meaning your solar panels will supplement the power that you pull from the grid and require permits and operating agreements with your utility. This is because if your panels are producing more energy than you're using, you can feed this back into the grid for your neighbors or others to use. Check with your utility to make sure that they'll give you some kind of a credit for this so you can offset your usage when the sun goes down. There are different rules around this and if your utility doesn't reward you for excess energy, you'll wanna add a battery to charge up when you don't need it or get a smaller system. Off-grid means there's no grid. You'll need a much larger solar system and quite a bit of batteries to ensure adequate power throughout the day and year, winter, summer, day and night. Energy offset is a term to help explain how big a system you'll need. So an energy offset of 100% means your system would produce 100% of the power you'll need. So for an off-grid system, you might actually want to consider maybe a 200% offset to account for cloudy days, bad weather, and so forth. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Finally, maybe you want to go solar for your RV or travel trailer, an increasingly popular option and one I've got my eyes on and I'm thinking about making a series about. An RV is basically an off-grid system with batteries with limited space, so other design considerations come into play like weight and size. We'll touch on all three. Feel free to check out all the chapters and skip around if RVs or homes or on or off-grid matter more to you. Just check out the chapters and find the part you want to watch about. Odds are you're going to want an on-grid home solar system. That's what most people will go with. Your options will be a roof mount system or a ground mount solar system. This one is a pretty easy choice. If you have acres of land that you have no use for, a ground system can be a good choice. You can easily access your panels if you ever have to service them or clean them, and there's no roof penetrations or other risks to your roof. Costs are actually pretty similar to roof mount systems because you have to run a very thick wire very long distances and do trenching, pour concrete footings and other structural installations, which all add to cost. In 2023, I'd say $3 a watt is a decent price here in the US. Prices will be roughly similar for a roof mount system, around $3 per watt. But now you'll need a roofer who will be installing brackets on your roof to mount a racking system that holds your panels. Hire a good solar company that does a good job and you won't have any roofing issues or leaks at all. In all the 11 years I had solar on my old house, we had zero issues, even through some record rainfall winters. I'm a huge fan of rooftop solar because this is a space not used for anything else. And it also keeps the sun off your roof and your attic cooler. So for me, roofs were just made for solar panels, but make that decision based on how much land you have versus roof space and what you wanna do. But the first piece of advice here is to make sure you have a good roof with at least 20 years of life left on it before you get solar panels installed. My roof on my new house is not in good shape, which is partly why I was able to afford buying it. And to get a feel for how bad our roof is, you can see it's not in the worst shape, but it's clearly falling apart. All of this needs to be changed. Plus, being over 20 years old, the underlayment, the really the part that keeps you protected from the weather is probably degraded as well. So we got to rip all this out. And in some areas like over here, it's really bad. You can just tell the parts where the sun hits it most, it's weathered quite a bit. Let's talk about costs. For me, I actually have two roofs to redo, the main house and our little detached office. Roofing is quoted in squares, where one square is 100 square feet, so our main house is 42 squares and the office is another nine. We decided to go with a 50-year asphalt shingle roof because, well, cost. <laughs> at $600 per square, I'm looking at $30,600 for a brand new roof. The dream was a standing seam metal roof, but at $1,700 a square, my quote, 
was $86,700. And yeah, it was just a dream, <laughs> especially because I also have to get the solar panels afterward. So now let's talk about the actual installation of your solar panels. The first thing, if you're gonna do a roof mount system like I'm doing, you can see here the racking is kind of going down. Here are my inverters. We'll talk about that in episode two. All the conduit has been kind of placed. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you have a good roof. I've been in this house for a year and I'm only going solar now. And the reason is I just got my new roof put on. And the reason is you never know what kind of damage is underneath. My roof was bad, it was old. I had a hot water pool heater system up here that was leaking. If you have a choice to just put new roofing over old roofing, don't do that. Take the time to replace everything, fix any old or rotted wood, do everything the right way, because this is your roof. If there's problems up here, you're gonna regret it. So step one, make sure your roof is gonna be good for the next at least 20 years, because your panels will last well over 20 years, and you don't wanna have to mess around with it again. These are traditional solar panels right here. To install them, you need racking. So the racking is what you see over here. So now what you'll notice is this flashing goes under your roof shingles or tiles, whatever you have, and that way you're waterproofed and secured. The water can't go back in underneath and screw up your roof. From there, you've got these footings that are into the joist of your roof. And then you got the racking that goes right here. And the panels will sit on top covering these microinverters and everything else and get bolted down. That's your more traditional install. But let's talk about the Bougier V SIG solar panels and let's talk about how you install those. So unless your plan is to just have one solar panel, which that's easy, but odds are you're gonna have more than one. So how do you connect them? Well, that comes to the first decision you'll have to make, which is series or parallel. So let me show you that. Here are the two leads of a solar panel, right? These are called MC4 connectors and don't do this, but yeah, they're, they're made to be very weatherproof and to withstand the elements and sunlight and everything else. So you have two choices. The first is to put them in series. So here is the positive and the negative of one panel and I'm gonna connect them together, right? So now we have the leads on the end. So these now are connected in series. What that means is that the voltage goes up. So these Bouge RV panels are 25 volts each and now this is now 50 volts, right? But the current stays the same. We'll talk about the benefits of either system here. But now let's go ahead and plug this in to our battery. Because of these connectors, you can't really screw them up because there's a male and a female end and you can't really get into too much trouble. But here we go. Okay, so we have both panels connected and we have an input. So the first drawback of doing it this way is that now if you have shading on one panel, it'll hurt the output of both panels. So if I put my hand here, and block the output, it'll actually hurt both panels production. That's the first problem with going in series. But there are things you can do if you go with a traditional panel, you can get optimizers on each panel, but then you get the added cost of going that route. Here's your second option. We'll take these two, right? So we'll take the positives of one and connect it to a adapter like this. Okay, so now the positives are tied together Okay, and the negatives will tie together. So like before, these panels are now connected together, but now that they're in parallel, the voltage of these Blue Jarvie panels will not change. It'll still be 25 volts overall, but the current now is twice as high. Okay, so we'll plug this in. And we're making power. Okay. The benefit of this now is if I have shading on one panel, it will not affect the other panel because they're in parallel. But the drawback is the current is twice as high now because the voltage hasn't changed. So the wattage overall is current times voltage. So either way you wire these, technically the wattage will be the same, right? You have two panels, but now we have better shade performance because if you have trees and things like I do, you can kind of see back here, I have tons of trees. Shading is a big problem for us. Um, and the second thing is because the current is higher, now these wires are gonna have more heat in them. So the wire size is one of the limitations that you're gonna have. You can't put more than about 20 amps probably through these wires. Again, check with your cables and everything else, but that will be your upper limit. So the way most people will go around this is by putting them in series. Of course, if you go in series, you're gonna likely have a string inverter, which is one big inverter, which we'll talk about in episode two. 
But those are your two ways of wiring these up. Now, a really fun fact about these Bouge RV panels is these actually perform quite well under shade and like cloudy days, much better than a traditional panel does. My testing about 15%, like I mentioned, and it's also just so easy to pull up. So if you're doing a permanent install in your house, you'll likely go with the traditional panel and racking and everything else. But if you wanna just roll these out really quickly, if you have a patio and you wanna just put up some panels and charge a battery or something else, you could do that. But the really key advantage of something like this is the portability. So if you're looking for an RV or you wanna put them on top of a car even, I've tried that, or an RV, this would be so easy to install. There's no racking or anything else. You can just take off the back adhesive and stick it down. And that is the reason you would go with this. Yes, they're flexible as well. So that means if there's any situation where you wanna just roll them up, put them in your car, take them out, take them with you to a campsite, for example, that's a great use case. Grab one of these batteries, you can plug in your laptops and everything else you wanna run while you're camping, power them off the sun and stay topped off. For those kinds of use cases, this is by far one of the coolest things I've ever seen because there are other flexible crystalline silicon panels out there in the market, but those are thin film solar panels and they have very low efficiencies, usually around seven to eight percent. This has the efficiency closer to a traditional panel in this form factor. And that is what's so cool about this. And this is kind of a new entry into the market. SIG solar panels were not very common in the past. They were always very expensive and they still are on the more expensive side. That's where for this, you really wanna have a good use case, weight, and flexibility, right? I could just come in, unplug this panel, grab it, roll it up, and take it with me. A traditional panel like the ones I have over there, that one panel is 400 watt, and that weighs about 55 pounds. These are 200 watt each, and they're actually not all that much bigger in terms of size, like footprint, but these two panels weigh 10 pounds. So a weight reduction of about 45 pounds and the flexibility of rolling it up like this. So if you're a big avid outdoorsman, if you have an RV, you're going camping at all this year and you wanna just have a little battery to top off your laptop, other things like that, run air conditioning or a little mini fridge. Bouge RV has some really cool mini fridges that I'm looking at as well. This is an amazing way to go. So enough of me, let's get into the good stuff. The data from my first year at my new house. My highest usage was in September at 1,704 kilowatt hours. It's actually pretty usual for San Diego with our later summers. Our lowest month was June at 763 kilowatt hours when I reduced my pool filter pump to only running about 50% of the time. Now over 12 months, we used nearly 13,000 kilowatt hours or 13 megawatt hours. But remember that's our whole house and our office and our entire business operation Everything you see on Tuba Da Vinci falls into that 13,000 kilowatt hours. The average in the US is about 30 kilowatt hours per day or 10,950. So if my goal was a 100% offset, let's calculate how big my solar system would have to be. There are different ways to do this, but because I have historical data from my previous house, I came up with a way to calculate the average number of sun hours per day. This is a generalized estimate, but it is based on real world data, a way to average solar power rise and fall curves from sunset to sundown to an estimated average each day. The days are longest in the summer and shortest in the winter. And here are my sun hours for my old house. I came up with 2.2 sun hours at its lowest in December and a high of 6.3 hours in the summer. This number is calculated by taking my old home's total system size, five kilowatts, and resulting generation each month, and then dividing it by 30 days. Pretty simple, but pretty powerful, because again, this is based on my actual data for my old house. But my new house has a problem. We live on a hill and our setting evening sun is blocked by the hillside, blocking solar generation by around 3 p.m. in the winter and 6 p.m. in the summer. As a result, I subtracted one solar hour from each month to come up with a projection for my new home. I chose one hour because the evening sun drops off in output anyway, so it's not like it's losing peak sun time. So I think one hour is a, a good estimate. With this rough estimate, I calculated that a 10 kilowatt system on my new house will produce the following amount of energy. Over 12 months, I'm projecting to produce 13,138 kilowatt hours to totally cover my usage. Now, 
There are a lot of factors like time of use billing, which charges you more money at peak times versus off peak times, like four to 9 p.m. would be more expensive than midnight, for example. And also tiered billing, where your energy in excess of a threshold, let's say a thousand kilowatt hours a month, is billed at a higher rate than below that threshold. But that's why I just wanted to use averages for everything to help us get an accurate measurement and take away some of this crazy datas and surcharges and all the stuff that you see on your electric bill. Using that $3 per watt figure, this system would cost me $30,000 plus a tax credit of $9,000 for a total system cost of $21,000. So how long will it take me to recoup? Let's go back to my table to see how much money I've spent on electricity. My lowest bill was $332 in November and my highest was $676 in September. And my yearly total was 5,556, which is an insanely high number. And why if you live in California, going solar is something you should really consider. Based on my projections for yearly generation, I can offset this entire amount each year. But let's assume there are some fees and things you don't consider. So let's say that probably I'll pay around $500 a year on electricity or a $5,056 per year savings which means my system will pay for itself in just 4.15 years, which is pretty amazing. My system in 2011 cost about three times more per watt and had a payback period of over eight years. This means the rise of electricity prices coupled with the fall in solar prices have cut the payback period in half. I hope this has been helpful and I'll be sure to put links to the descriptions to some of these calculators and spreadsheets to play with. Be sure to make a copy when you open it so you have your own copy to tinker with. If solar is an economic decision for you, this should really help you understand if it's financially worth it. It's hard to put a price on being energy independent or self-reliant. So if those are your motivations, this won't matter as much. But if you're looking into saving cold, hard cash, check out the calculator and see how long it would take you to recoup your cost. So this is just the beginning. Part two is going to be about inverters and how that factors in. So don't miss that. But here's my final takeaway. My big goal is to reduce the price of solar for all of you guys. So there's some fun ways you can do that. How about buying used solar panels? That could easily save you 15% on the price of panels. Next week, we'll talk about how you can save on inverters and other things. So subscribe if you like this video. Leave us your comments and questions. We'll try to address them in future videos. And as always, I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci.